This presents to you the investigations that could be carried out to diagnose snake envenoming with a special reference to Sri Lanka. It will also focus on the investigation which are carried out to decide on antivenom administration and other supportive treatment in a victim of snake envenoming. In an overview, this presentation explains to you about what is investigation of snake envenoming, why is it important to investigate a patient with snake envenoming and what tests are available to investigate such a patient. Snake venom affects many organ systems of the body including the bite site. Among them coagulation cascade, vascular system, nerve system, renal system and muscular system are highly vulnerable to attack by snake venom. Therefore, the treating clinicians order various investigations to diagnose the effects of snake venom on different systems of the body. To be frank, investigations are not needed to diagnose snake bite. The patient is admitted to the hospital with a history of snake bite which is sufficient to diagnose a snake bite. But the major requirement for treatment is to know whether snake venom circulates in the body. Thus, investigations are designed to diagnose snake envenoming. The diagnosis is supported by a history of snake bite and clinical features suggesting specific organ system involvement with venom. In the meantime, early detection of envenoming by investigation is equally important to commence antivenom before the irreversible effects of the venom begins. Along with antivenom, supporting care is given to patients depending on the organ systems involved. An involvement of the organ systems is detected by investigations. For example, when nerve system is affected by snake venom, respiratory support is given to the victim and when the renal system is affected, renal replacement therapy is commenced. The type, timing and frequency of investigation vary according to the type of a snake bite and the condition of the patient. It also depends on the availability of investigation test in the particular hospital. Why investigations are important in snake envenoming? As explained earlier, investigations enable the detection of damage caused to the organ system by snake venom. In some instances, investigations are carried out in frequent intervals to assess the prognosis of the clinical condition caused by the snake envenoming. And of course, antivenom is indicated only after investigation to confirm envenoming. Investigations are also important to commence supporting therapy and to detect envenoming as early as possible to minimize the fatal complications. A number of investigations are done following snake bite to identify envenoming and particular organ system involved. Coagulation cascade is one of the highly vulnerable system to snake venom commonly in viper bites. Among many tests to diagnose coagulopathy, whole blood clotting test 20 minutes or WBCT 20 is widely used because of its simplicity and the feasibility. Prothrombin time, international normalized ratio, activated partial thromboplastin time, fibrinogen, clotting factor assays and D-dimer levels are other tests conducted to detect abnormalities of clotting cascade as in any other coagulation disorder. Renal involvement is another significant consequence of envenoming. Although not a specific investigation, monitoring fluid input and output of the patient is crucial to determine the renal functions, especially following viper bites in Sri Lanka. 
serum creatinine, blood urea, serum electrolytes including sodium and potassium are indirect measurements of renal functions. In some instances, ultrasound scan of the kidneys is performed to observe the alteration of corticomedullary demarcation and detect acute kidney injury following the snake bite. There are no investigation to detect the hemorrhagic effect following snake endonyming unless hemorrhages occurs internally or externally in the body. Medical imaging including CT brain and abdomen, ultrasound scan of the abdomen are performed if hemorrhages are suspected to assess the gross bleeding in the body. Urinary myoglobin, serum potassium and electromyographic techniques are used to detect any damage caused by muscular system by snake venom. The myotoxins in the venom cause damage to the muscle cells and result in an increased concentration of myoglobin in blood and urine. During rhabdomyolysis, potassium is released into the blood resulting in elevated potassium levels. These investigations are quite important in a patient with a sea snake bite. What are the investigations important in local effect of envenoming? Local effect of envenoming occur at the bite site and around the bite site and they vary from mild local pain to extensive local necrosis and secondary bacterial infection. Although there is no specific investigation to predict the extension of these effects, the wound culture and antibiotic sensitivity test aid in deciding the category of antibiotic treatment for secondary bacterial infections. Let us look into some of the commonly conducted investigations following snake bite. Whole blood clotting time is almost invariably done when a patient is admitted with a history of snake bite even at a rural hospital. Its methodology is very important to obtain accurate results from the test. Collect 1 milliliters of venous blood into the clean previously unused glass tube is very important. It is not recommended to use penicillin bottles for this purpose. The tube with blood should be kept at room temperature undisturbed for 20 minutes. At 20 minutes, check whether the blood has clotted or not. If it has a clot, test is negative and interpreted has no coagulopathy. If it has no clot, test is positive and interpreted as coagulopathy following snake endonymy. Prothombrine time, INR are other commonly used investigation to diagnose coagulopathy in snake bites. This facility is only available in base hospital and major hospital in Sri Lanka, but not in other peripheral hospitals. Collect 5 milliliters of venous blood into the citrate tube mix gently and send the sample to the hematology lab. The laboratory will analyze the sample and give the results. Normal range for prothombrine time is 11 to 14 seconds and INR is 0 0.8 to 1.2. Prolonged PT or INR indicate coagulopathy following snake endonymy. Activated partial thromboplastin time or APTT is an alternative test to PT INR. To perform APTT, collect 5 milliliters of venous blood into citrated tube. Mix gently and send the sample to hematology lab. Normal range for APTT is 25 to 35 seconds and prolonged APTT indicates coagulopathy following snake endonymy. Fibrinogen level in the blood is another clotting parameter to measure following snake bite but only major hospitals are provided with this facility. Low level of fibrinogen indicates coagulopathy. Fibrinolysis is a common phenomenon following Russell's viper bite leading to very low or undetectable levels of fibrinogen in the blood. More importantly, isolated low fibrinogen levels 
without any other clotting abnormality may indicate coagulopathy following p triper endonyming. Clotting factor assays can also be used to assess the derangements after snake bite. Low levels of clotting factors indicate coagulopathy. Moreover, the deficiencies in factor 5 and 10 are reported in Russell Swiper endonyming. D dimer levels or fibrinogen degradatory products level in the blood is another commonly used parameter to detect coagulopathy. Elevated D dimer levels implies the excessive fibrinolysis, which is commonly seen in coagulopathy due to wiper envenoming. Monitoring fluid input and output is essential following snake envenoming. Low urine output within hours or days of envenoming indicate acute kidney injury. In the meantime, increased urine output after weeks or months from snake bite may indicate chronic renal injury. Elevated serum creatinine, blood urea, serum electrolytes, sodium and potassium indicate deterioration of the renal functions, especially in acute renal injury following a wiper bite in Sri Lanka. Ultrasound scan of the abdomen is sometimes indicated to diagnose acute and chronic renal injury following snake bite especially in Sri Lanka. As mentioned earlier, urinary myoglobin, serum potassium, electromyography are used to detect myotoxic effect of snake venom, especially in sea snakes and brussel swiper bite. Elevation of myoglobin and serum potassium results from skeletal muscle damage and rhabdomyolysis and electromyographic patterns alter following muscle damage due to snake envenoming. Any abnormal results of an investigation conducted in a patient with a history of snake bite is an indication for administration of antivenom. Therefore, it is vital to conduct the investigations and detect envenoming as early as possible to prevent the development of irreversible organ damage. In addition, some investigation results guide the clinicians to provide specific supportive therapy to the victim. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you.